Okay, thank you very much. It's too loud. Okay. Okay, so um, do we have uh, this one? Okay. Thank you very much. As you said, I have been involved in innovation for the last uh, 15 years, mostly in companies helping them to develop innovation strategies. But during the last uh, five years, I realized that companies are uh, finding innovation in the collision with other companies, and that's how the Eco Society project started. But anyway, I think it would be interesting to see what's going on around us. It's a sort of uh, emerging force related to collaboration that, in my opinion, will be very relevant in the next years. Uh, with a, a very particular problem, which is that we are knowledgeable about uh, competition in companies. We don't have a clear clue on cooperation. So the whole management has been based on competition, and now we have to build a new management based on collaboration, which is not an easy task. Last year, 2011, was the first uh, anniversary, if you want, 100 years of uh, the founding of uh, management, the modern management. Uh, the, the Taylor's article about uh, modern management was written in, in 1911. So last year was the first uh, centenary of uh, uh, this uh, management as we know it, uh, and now we have to rebuild it. So across 10 uh, very uh, rapid ideas, I will go through why collaboration is an emerging force that will be necessary. In fact, my, my last book is about this, is about why collaboration is the solution to this uh, economic crisis, which is not just a crisis in a specific place of the world, but is something that will spread the whole planet if we want to react accordingly. Well, the first idea is that I think there is a new way of capitalism that is emerging, is something that uh, has to appear because the popularity of the word uh, uh, capitalism is going down all over the world. So it's not just here, everywhere. The idea of capitalism as we is, uh, is going down, is being you know, less and less and less popular. And uh, if you see what's going on around in terms of social networks, in terms of uh, projects, in terms of uh, any sort of sharing, the idea is that new things are appearing that were absolutely impossible some years ago. Two examples, just two examples. Microtasking. Microtasking is the idea that you can actually have a, a task, uh, something to do, and you can uh, break it into pieces so that it could be done anywhere in the world but different people. This idea of uh, uh, dismembering one uh, task into pieces is absolutely revolutionary. We are just starting it. The idea that some people in Africa using a mobile can do something piece by piece uh, and um, joining this or putting this together with uh, a task uh, being done in Indonesia or whatever is absolutely new. It's a new form of capitalism. The distribution, the spreading of resources in order to accomplish a task. That's the first idea why capitalism is changing. It's way easier to do things spread around the world uh, in a very efficient way because we have the technology. But the second idea is this combination of me and we, how things that you are do because you want to have a, a profit or a benefit, maybe it's something happening with that, with the micro. So the idea that just doing something because you want to get the benefit personally, you are also generating a benefit for the planet. This is one an interesting example of what's going on Recycle Bank. It's a place where you get rewards, you get points, uh, if you recycle correctly. Uh, so you, you go through your recycling, uh, you use your recycle bin, and there is a way to, uh, to uh, measure how much you are recycling, and you get discounts in the local supermarkets. And in this model, everybody is a winner, uh, the consumer is a winner because you get the discounts. The supermarkets are winners because they get clients that uh, consumers that in, other, in, in another option could go to uh, malls or way out of the city. And the municipality is a winner because it's uh, a cheaper to, to, to manage this uh, garbage through recycling rather than uh, through a typical uh, waste point. So, 
Uh, the idea is being here a good citizen generates good results for you. This is a new form of capitalism. It's not a capitalism based on individualism. It's a capitalism based on sharing things with others. But maybe the perfect example of, of why this combination of me and we, something that is good for me, is good for us, is what General Electric is doing with the Eco Imagination Project. See, here you have one uh, piece of stuff. It's, uh, it's a water heating equipment. And uh, this equipment is sold with these two different labels. The first one is environmental benefits, and the second one is operating benefits. So the idea is you pay less to get your water uh, heated, and uh, it's good for the planet because it's, it's less polluting. So by being a good citizen, you get good results uh, from your money. So this combination is absolutely new. It's a new form of capitalism. Uh, and uh, is uh, possible because we have technologies and we have this new sharing mentality. So this leads us directly to the idea of collaboration, that collaboration is an emerging force that will be necessary, not because we, 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 we go back to the 60s and we all become hippies, no. It's that because it makes economic sense, it's made, it makes a lot of economic sense. Well. And we have to discover a lot of things related to collaboration, like trust. Because if collaboration is necessary, trust is an absolute requirement. Without trust, there is no collaboration possible. So it's interesting to see, for instance, how British Airways has a whole project, it's called Face to Face, where they try to push the idea that, okay, collaboration through social networks and whatever is great, but you actually need to meet face to face in order to uh, get things done. And uh, it is not just a marketing campaign that obviously they want to move people around, but that it, it's, it makes sense that for some sort of collaboration where uh, there is a, where trust is critical, you actually need a face-to-face -face conversation. Uh, if, if, if I can go in a derivative of this, we are mammals, and mammals need physical contact in order to get trust. And uh, so this means that there will be a lot of new possibilities uh, for companies developing new collaboration processes. Because believe me, we don't know exactly how to do it. It's a paradox. We need to collaborate, but the whole management thing is based on competing, not on collaborating. And so we will need a lot of new processes, methods, etc. So it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, it's a small wonder that around us, a lot of companies are developing new uh, proposals to companies in terms of how to collaborate, processes to collaborate. And uh, in, on top of that, if you ask companies whether they want to collaborate, if, if you do that with companies, it will happen exactly the same as if I put the question here in the audience. If I tell you, will you like to collaborate? Nobody will say no. It's like, uh, you want to kill whales? I mean, no. So, you, do you want to collaborate? Yes, absolutely. Nobody will say no. But if you ask them whether companies have a way to measure how collaboration is generating results, they don't have a single pool. So, the model, the economic model is going to collaboration. Uh, we know that we need processes, but uh, we don't know exactly how to measure the result of collaborating. So, so far, Collaboration is great, it's good, but it, we don't know whether it makes economic sense or not. So it's something that will happen in the next years. There are a lot of intellectual uh, uh, ideas to be developed around this. Going in, in the direction of, of uh, design, which is not my, my, my field, but so, so forgive me if, if I'm not uh, right in the, next, in the next minute or so. Um, the idea of collaboration uh, also is bringing new possibilities around the designing of space and time. You actually need a different design of an office, a different design of a city, a different design of a school, whatever, if you want people to collaborate. So it's, uh, it's way different. For instance, if you look to companies like Steelcase or others, and developing a whole new bunch of uh, tools, uh, products, in this case furniture, that will help people to collaborate. So it's a new, uh, I will, it's, it's a new possibility that is emerging and that will uh, will require a lot of new ideas, a lot of new approach.
to help you organize a space in order to, uh, to make people collaborate. And uh, on top of that, we are learning that um, the most effective spaces in terms of collaboration are temporary, I mean, are not planned. This, the, the most interesting uh, building in terms of collaboration in history is Building 20 in the MIT. Uh, this building, as you can see, uh, it's, it was temporary, I mean, it was built during the Second World War, uh, just to put together a lot of uh, uh, techie people uh, to develop uh, uh, different things for the military effort of the United States. And uh, it's been there for uh, around 50 years. It, it was uh, torn down in, in, at the end of the 90s, I think 98. And uh, it is exactly because it was temporary, that was nothing planned, that allowed uh, a lot of new ideas uh, to be born in this space. And Noam Chomsky developed the first ideas of uh, his linguistic uh, theory in this building, and digital was born in this uh, building. So the idea is we have to learn, to learn a lot of how to design space that is not preventing ideas from spreading, but just the, the other way around. How you develop space that help people collaborate. For instance, we have even studied that in this building, innovation was possible because there was no limit to what you could do with the building. So it means that if you want to, to just uh, you know, uh, uh, open a new space or just uh, destroy it or whatever, you could do it because the building was temporary. So it was no problem. Imagine in a building which is planned, which is official, which is formal, sometimes you can touch nothing at all uh, which is preventing you from actually innovating. And uh, so space matters a lot in innovation. There will be a lot of design in collaborative, we call collaborating spaces. But we are also learning that uh, there is a spontaneous force in uh, any collaboration that is very difficult to plan. You know that the Silicon Valley is a typical example in the world. <coughs> Is like an, it's like a state of mind rather than a plan. It's something that just developed because uh, there was a different components at the right place at the right time. But in Europe, we have another example here in Europe, which is the Silicon Roundabout in London, where spontaneously several companies uh, related to media, uh, internet or whatever, just uh, were uh, around specific place in East London, and uh, without any previous, uh, I would say, announcement, uh, they developed a, a, a real uh, cluster of companies that started to collaborate with uh, one with the other. So there is a lot to be learned in terms of what spontaneity is um, generating uh, in terms of collaboration, in terms of uh, new uh, economy. And uh, just a, another idea, which is uh, very much uh, uh, important in my opinion, is how we will re reorganize time with this, uh, I would say, weird uh, term of time urbanization. The idea is that we have to reinvent how we use time. And that the typical schedule, uh, one thing after the other in a specific place, has to be um, translated into new ways of um, using time to collaborate. Maybe the, the perfect example is jelly. Maybe you know what's jelly. Jelly is an idea that is, you know, taking the world, if you want, where you invite people to your home, that's the place where you live and where you work, you invite people to come just to share the day and to talk about what you are doing. So the idea is, uh, rather than being in a working, in a co-working space, in an office, whatever, just share your house, your home with other people in order to create the conditions for collaboration uh, to, uh, to, to, to emerge. So uh, how we reuse time in different ways, it's uh, way important. Another example is the startup bus, for instance, where you put people in a bus and you take them for 200, 300, uh, 400 miles. And during this journey, the people within the bus have to collaborate in order to do to, to get something done. Uh, this started uh, from San Francisco to Austin, Texas. Now is in different parts of the world. In fact, 
Um, and project has been uh, presented here in Spain in a bus that will move from one place to the other. And during the journey, a new project will be developed. So the idea is take time and see it in a different way and reorganize it. This will be important for collaboration. In terms of co-creation, I mean, you know more than I may, uh, may even think of. So, I mean, what can I say? What can I, I can say is that the, one of the most uh, relevant things of co-creation is the change, changing the economic uh, logic, the economic logic of, of uh, co-communication. Quick started is the perfect example. The idea is that getting a prototype is much easier through quick starter because it is way easier to get money from a bunch of people than from a single individual. So in this case, this person is trying to develop a prototype for a pool sensor to measure your heart rate. Uh, the idea is that he just needs three thousand dollars to do that to, to develop the prototype. But one hundred thirty-two people, forty-seven days before the project is to be, you know, the 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 the, 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 the uh, this sort of uh, well, uh, you know getting money, it's uh, it's done. Uh, he already got uh, almost double what he was pledging in, uh, in this place. So the idea is, this is made impossible. A lot of projects that were absolutely difficult or impossible in the previous economic situation. So co-creation is possible because there are new economic tools. And then there are new manufacturing processes. You may, you may be aware of local motors. Local motors is a very interesting project in the US where it's a new, it's a new uh, a car that was has been designed by uh, a lot of different people. In fact, it's using a common engine. I think it's a Mercedes-Benz engine, if I if I remember well. So the idea is, you have the engine, it's done, but the rest is designed by a bunch of people. And the cool thing about this is that you can build your own car in a place. So you can go to a garage, and uh, there you have tools, you have uh, people, and that help you to build your own car. So co-creation is not just a matter of participating in the design process, it's actually participating in the finance of the project, participating in the building of the thing. You know that the, the, the do-it-yourself movement is taking the world by storm. I think this will come. People want to do things uh, with uh, their own hands. And uh, on top of that, personal fabrication may revolutionize the world. You know that this is one example that's well known. Um, this uh, uh, top is, uh, has been produced, has been manufactured with a 3D printer, uh, exactly with the size of the, of the, of, um, the owner in this case. So um, these will absolutely change the world. So we have new finance tools, new manufacturing tools, and uh, uh, new, uh, I would say, uh, personal fabrication tools that will change the way we create things and we uh, put them into the market. And on top of that, if you see projects like Cuso by Lego, the way you decide that a product is to be developed is different. For instance, it's well explained here in just three steps. First, you have an idea, so you tell Lego, I would like to have this Lego. For instance, I would love to have Sagrada Familia in Lego. You tell them. You don't have to design anything, it's just, I would like to have this. Second step, if 1,000 people say, okay, I will also like to have this, I commit myself to buy it if you have it, Lego actually manufactures it. So this is new in terms of how a company decides to bring something into the market. It's a new way to decide which products have to be in, the, in their portfolio. Well, there is also a revolution in how we learn, how we uh, develop new ideas, and uh, uh, there have been a lot of tools created in, in the last uh, two or three decades that have been there and that are now appearing um, uh, like a hurricane. For instance, maybe the most uh, well-known one is a problem-based learning. Problem-based learning is a learning methodology that has been around for almost 30 years, or maybe more. And uh, this started in Canada, in McMaster University, as a way to solve the problem 
that uh, uh, students of medicine weren't able to absorb all the information that you, you should get uh, in that discipline. The idea is that every single day there is new knowledge about medicine that is being generated, and it's absolutely impossible that a student of medicine gets everything. So the model of problem-based learning is, uh, the main idea is that you train people to determine what knowledge you don't have that you should, and where you can have this money, sorry, this knowledge, and how you can introduce this knowledge into the problem you have to solve. So it's actually making people learn how to learn. This idea is team-based, which means that the new way to learn is by solving problems through a team. And this, that has been demonstrated in fields like medicine, is, uh, I think, spreading all over the place. So uh, there will be a revolution in how we learn from the, the, the common stand place, which is um, individual, uh, learning through a new way which is more based on, on teams. Um, we have been uh, involved in several uh, projects uh, here in Catalonia. This one, it's, uh, it was an interesting project where we put uh, high school students into solving uh, real problems of companies. And uh, the result has been quite, quite amazing. The idea is when you put young people to solve real problems rather than you know, in stuck in their class and learning uh, 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 theorems and all these uh, doctrines or whatever, um, they develop new and in a very in a very practical way. And uh, incidentally, there is a company in UK. The name is Space Unlimited. The name is way interesting. Uh, the, that they use teams to solve real problems of companies. You have here a example the National Museum of Scotland ask Space Unlimited to uh, have teams work around the idea of how to get uh, young people going to the museum. Who else could do that better than young people? So the idea is just by putting together people uh, solving real problems, uh, a new way of learning is uh, appearing that uh, is uh, maybe more efficient than the, the actual way of doing it. You are in design, so uh, uh, this could be an interesting example of what's going on. If you take a bunch of teams and you ask them how they can transform the room, the, the classroom, into a more uh, uh, collaborative space, you get something like this, where they take the typical chair, you know, with this uh, folding, folding table, and they transform the table into a whiteboard, so that every single point in the class is a place where any student could be the professor. So it's interesting that this idea has been developed by teams, and uh, when they were uh, on the idea of transforming the room, the classroom, into uh, a more colorful space. But if you want to see examples of what's going on, it's interesting that a lot of contents in, in, in education is being transformed around the idea of real problems. For, so this is a physics book, uh, I would say high school, and uh, the idea there, uh, in this book, they explain physical concepts through realities. For instance, if you want to tell students how uh, water uh, or the, 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 the and the liquid the dynamics, if you want to tell them what's Bernoulli and Venturi and all that, you can do from a very classical perspective, which is theorems and formulas or whatever, but you can tell them that they can reuse... Okay, okay. So you can uh, actually have them uh, understand how the water is distributed uh, in the cities uh, in order to get uh, you know, water in the water. And the, uh, the idea of learning together, uh, problem-based learning and all that, it's interesting, but there is a very interesting force also appearing in, in, in our, around us, which is the idea of mentoring. The idea of mentoring is being reinvented. The idea is that you can learn a lot if you are around the young people, and if you are close to one person that has developed uh, their skills and knowledge across uh, his or her life. 
I don't know whether you are aware of the Rolex mentorship program. It's a very interesting one where they put together the peer, if you want, uh, a young promise and somebody that has been uh, already, uh, it, it's a legend in the field, in order to, through direct contact, develop new sorts uh, of, uh, of learning. But if I have to show you one example of how the idea of design thinking, the idea of do it yourself, the idea of learning together is being applied, I will use the example of high tech high. High tech high is a high school in California. It's spreading uh, around the, 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 the United States, but nowadays they started in San Diego. And it's a high school where everything is based on projects. So I will say, I will, I will I'd love to go to this place when I was studying, because what you see there is everything is based on projects. And just to see what sort of projects they develop, you can go to the, the page of Alfred Solis. Alfred Solis, in fact, he's, he's a, a, a mechanical engineer. Uh, he has been working on the, on the uh, consulting industry for several years. He was also an artist, whatever. And he went back to, uh, to a high school uh, in order to transform the way kids learn about engineering. And it's interesting that the sort of projects that he is pushing is like this one. This is called the Marvelous Project. The idea of the Marvelous Project is that the, te the teens in the high school have to build an obelisk. So it's, in a way it's art, it's history, it's literature, it's a lot of things. But uh, the, the thing is not just to build the obelisk, but how you build the mechanical engineering to uh, make uh, this obelisk uh, go up and be placed on the right place. So uh, it's a combination of uh, learning, it's a combination of uh, different matters, different subjects, in order to get something done, which is put the obelisk in the middle of the school like this, which is not an easy task. So uh, the point is that you can change the way people learn uh, using collaboration as a tool and, um, and using projects as uh, the main goal. Okay. Something about network, networks and markets. Well, uh, I am quite uh, reluctant to accept social networks as they are today. I think there, there is a sort of a dark space around uh, social networks. I think there is a concentration of power and information as never before as uh, we had in, in, in this planet. So I, I am uh, of this uh, small bunch of people that think that social networks will be very criticized in the next years because it's a dark space. That's my point. But anyway, I think that networks are here in order to make people do things that will never uh, be possible without. Some examples. Here in Barcelona, we have a perfect example of how to use social networks in order to get things, to, to get things done. It's a info. This is a, the information system for trains around the city. Some of you may know it. So it's, it's a perfect example of how people is better than any official you know, organization because people are there on real time. So people using trains around the city could use Twitter to actually tell the system whether the train is going well or not, okay or not. So then, yes, I've been here stuck for 30 minutes, so uh, <coughs> that, that they say that the trains are going okay, the train is stopped here, and I tell you, I am here, and the other one says the same. So the idea is just collaborating, people could create the best information system possible. Another example is this one. We know a lot about Facebook, people just chatting there or you know, interacting in a way or another, but this is the sort of application of social networks that I would like to see in the future. This is a group of uh, uh, medical doctors. Uh, the group is called MedOnLearn. It's a closed group, so there are around 2,000 uh, medical doctors here in Spain. And what they share is they share diagnostics. So the idea is they put, for instance, one image like this, and the, the guy that is uh, actually asking for advice uh, is getting a lot of different potential diagnoses from other people. So in a way, networks, the logical next step is becoming a knowledge market. 
a place where people share what they know in order to be more efficient, in order to be uh, more intelligent or whatever. Things will change a lot in social networks where, where things like Square will develop. You know that the Square is a revolution in how people would actually get paid by other people. So the Square, which is this little device plus the software, transforms in any smartphone into a point of sale. This means that anybody here in this place could be a shop with Square. So you can sell anything that you want to other people that has a credit card, which is everybody. So if you put social networks plus Square, you change the economy. Because anybody is being transformed into a potential shop. And uh, finally, the interesting idea of this uh, uh, networks transformed into markets is that we could do together things very easily that would be absolutely impossible in other, in other ways. And teaming is the perfect example. Teaming is a project that was started here in Barcelona by a Dutch guy. And the idea is that you could make one euro of your salary every month to, uh, to a, a social, a social uh, organization. Well, the idea is that committing one euro is nothing, but if you have 200,000 people every month committing one euro, you have 2,000 euros, uh, 200,000 euros a month, which is uh, it's happening right now. They are getting 200,000 euros every month to be uh, applied in different social organizations. So the idea is that social networks plus tools to share money plus tools to commit yourself to a social events could have a great impact. In terms of consumption, another interesting idea uh, is that maybe the future of the middle class in Western countries is uh, directly related to the possibilities of sharing. So the idea is that middle class will be struggling in Western countries for the next years. It's not just a matter of the crisis, it's something else. And the, the way that middle class could survive is by sharing. And sharing has a lot of different perspectives. <clears throat> the most well known is how you share something that somebody is providing. For instance, zip car is it's like a club. They have cars, so rather than having your own car, what you can do is take the car whenever you need it. In several places of the world, this makes a lot of sense. I was in Switzerland three years ago. And everybody that I was talking to had a sharing, a car sharing, a club. They didn't have a car. It didn't make sense to have a car. What they wanted is to use the car whenever they wanted. So uh, in this case, in a country where, with a perfect public transportation system, it does make no sense to own a car. So this is absolutely one idea, sharing for the middle class. But there is another one which is even better, which shows that things will be both uh, just because of our imagination. Social car, for instance, if that is another way to use a car, which is rather than having a company that has a stock of cars that you can use, here you can rent the car of another person. So it's renting between people. So I have my car in my parking lot, is there the whole week, I may use it during the weekend, maybe, and uh, why not rent it to another person that needs the car during the week? So this is showing how co-consumption, collaborative consumption, is not just uh, an accident, it's something that makes a lot of economic sense. So the idea is that we will put into circulation all the assets that we have at home that we are not using. And this will be done because of economic reasons. Zillow is the perfect example of this. You know that you may have, I don't know, a compressor, a power tool, whatever, at home, you bought it because you wanted to do something, you have just one case, and it's there for the rest of uh, your life and its life. So why not put this tool into a place that you can rent it to people so that you can generate an income from this unused asset? So there will be a lot of possibilities in sharing uh, things, generating energy from, through a collaborative uh, production platform, and either uh, put yourself into the market uh, in terms of what you can sell as a personal capability. Uh, that's probably is uh, one wonderful example of a market 
where people is exchanging their assets, their personal capabilities, in order to get a rich one. So this will generate a whole new economy based on the co collaboration of, uh, of uh, capabilities between people. And uh, just to, to go into the final uh, conclusion, uh, there is a, another impact of collaboration, which is uh, transforming every one of us into an activist, uh, into somebody that is actually having an impact on the rest of, of society. Uh, I really love this example. It's, it's a Spanish example. It's called Libre de Barreras. The idea is that uh, this is a group of people that's, uh, that is generating a map of Spain in terms of architectural barriers. So places where you cannot go with a wheelchair. So places that are difficult for somebody with uh, some sort of the, the, uh, discapacity. Uh, this sort of project is something that will cost a lot of money if done by the government. It will, it will cost an incredible amount of money to go around the, 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 the country. And in this way, you are just uh, generating the same result because you have a lot of activists. If you want, there is another example which is even better, which is, okay, if you are a good citizen and, and you uh, uh, download this software to your mobile phone, whenever you go to the street and you find something which is not working okay, you can just take a photograph, send it to uh, your uh, municipality through this software, so that the municipality has a map <laughs> of places that need, uh, need a solution, that there is something broken, something that uh, they have to repair. This is absolutely more efficient and more economic, uh, cheaper than doing it through uh, informal ways. So, but it uh, it, uh, it uh, unveils a new problem, which is how you pay the good citizen to be a good citizen. So, how you, in, in a way, uh, uh, <coughs> provide to these good citizens a return of their uh, investment, in time investment in bringing uh, the problems to the knowledge of uh, the municipality. Uh, there are, are several examples in the world of um, uh, mobilization of people, uh, hundreds of people, thousands of people, uh, which means that actually there is a possibility to do great things if you use the networks and you, and you move people to be active. This was an example, I think it was a couple of years ago in Portugal. There was a challenge. It was a, somebody started this campaign that was uh, uh, a lot of people had to go uh, in a weekend to clean uh, forests in, in Portugal. And uh, it was not that great because it was raining that day, but uh, there were, I think it was 200,000 people committing themselves to go that weekend to clean the forests in Portugal. So this will cost a lot if done in other ways. And just by moving people, and uh, mobilizing people, uh, it's uh, absolutely uh, cheaper. OK. And uh, in terms of business, this is uh, what we have seen is that the world is going to collaboration because it makes economic sense for people. But in terms of business, there is even better, it's even more interesting what's going on. Well, the idea is that companies are starting to collaborate because it makes sense. The way to generate new products and services is by colliding. So the idea is, uh, in a way, blue oceans are the results of collisions. But a lot of these collisions are accidental. Let me show you several examples. See, you have here Coca-Cola that has developed a new technology to manufacture these bottles. These bottles are based on a sugar cane waste, so they, they are very ecological. They develop this, this uh, technique. And Hanks that has the same ecological problem, which is manufacturing millions of uh, bottles like Coca-Cola, which are not uh, ecological, I would say, because they're plastic. They, were, they, they came to Coca-Cola asking for this technique. And Coca-Cola would have said in a previous world, OK, I franchise or I license this technology to you, so you buy this technology and you use it. But what they actually said, OK, you can use this technology uh, with us. And any novelty, any new development that you develop, we could use it together. 
So is my Creative Commons applied to the manufacturing, the manufacturing world, which is different. So it's a new thing. Coca-Cola has been involved in a lot of collaboration examples. This is another interesting one. You won't see any Coke, uh, any Coke uh, icon here, but you can feel it. I mean, it's just a matter of uh, the Phantom, <laughs> the, the red thing. It's a matter of these uh, drops here, these uh, droplets here. And uh, you can actually feel this. This is like Coke. Well, it's a project between Ely and Coke to develop this new uh, uh, soft drink is, uh, based on coffee. And uh, what Coca-Cola is bringing to this project is the marketing knowledge. So it is, they know how to sell this stuff in supermarkets and in other places. Ely does not know how to sell this in supermarkets because it's not their normal channel. So collaborations between companies, either in terms of manufacturing processes, in terms of marketing knowledge, whatever, are absolutely around us. See, and it's very simple, and a lot of you young people here in the place, I bet that you will do a lot of projects in the next years combining the capabilities of companies. It's just a matter of imagination. For instance, very simple. If I tell you how you can add a bottle of Coke with a chair, you don't know what the result would be, but you know something very clear. The result will be, which color will it be? Red. Red. That's clear. That's for sure. Red. So anything that will result will be red. And which is the easiest thing you can do, combine a coat and a chair, which is red? Is that? Red. Chair. Red. So it's exactly what happened. So this project between Emeco and Coca-Cola, the result is a chair. Is a chair made with plastic, is uh, ecological because it's made with uh, recycled bottles. And uh, this project is presented like this. So it's two brands together to develop something that is new that was not in the market. Emeco was manufacturing aluminum chairs. So in this project, they put together what they know in order to generate a new, a new stuff, a new thing that uh, didn't uh, Let's look at another example. If you combine a car manufacturer and a toy maker, what's the result? A toy car. Huh? A toy car. Obviously, I've done this exercise in lots of places around the world. It's always the same result. There is something in this image that tells you that this is boring, this is car stuff, so it's boring, this is nicer. So the result, if you combine these two things, it's a toy car. Makes sense. So I, I, if I force you to go in this way, and I want a product here, what will you say? What's the result of this combination? Okay, it's way easy. I mean, a toy car, a car toy, right? So the idea is, the result is a Yeti, which is a, a new car by Infman Skoda. It's a combination of the capabilities of Skoda and Imaginarium. Skoda is building the car. Imaginarium is designing the internal part of the car in order for kids to have fun within the car. So these combinations are all around us, and you don't, you don't realize that. Another example, if you combine Adidas with Sennheiser, so it's sports and uh, you know, uh, earphones, what do you get? What's the typical result, the normal result? is something related to sports, something related to earphones. So it's, it's a waterproof earphone, exactly. So and this is, I will say, the image of the future in terms of collaboration between companies. A product which is in the middle of two companies, presented with their own brand. So it's Adidas, it's Sennheiser. So it's not different, it's just both together with the product in the middle, which is bringing together the capabilities, knowledge of two, of two companies. This is a photo of the future in terms of products. What you will have is a combination of knowledge of different companies in order to do something together. Well, so this is adding companies, but you can also think of multiplication, which is more complex. I don't have time to go through this, but I will tell you that if you get something like Amazon, which is purely online, and 7-Eleven, which is purely physical, and you think in terms of what you can do together beyond what they do today, it's a, the result is a, a new project, which is a pickup 
uh, blockers and infrastructure that Amazon and Cellular is building so that you can actually get products in these blockers and sell your own products through the whole network using this combination of offline and offline. Okay. Well, we have analyzed so, so, so 150 cases around the world, and the result is amazing. There is a lot of collaboration uh, going on. Well, just to, 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 to go to, to my final point, um, uh, it's clear that collaboration is there, that we will have to learn a lot, etc. And uh, it's clear that business is going in this direction. So in 2009, we started this project that's called Co Society, that is aiming at something very different very difficult, which is generating systematic intersections rather than accidental intersections. A lot of the examples that you have seen, Coca-Cola, Nine, whatever, all these examples, are most of them the result of an accident. The accident looks like this. The vice president of one company meets the vice president of another company in an airport. And it just happened that they were, they studied at the same university you know, centuries ago. And uh, so you start talking, like, okay, what do you do? Oh, I am a cook, oh, I am whatever. Let's do something together. And the result of this is that their teams inherit, in a way, the goal to do something together. It, it, it looks fun, but it's, it's not that different. So the idea is that a lot of intersections between companies are accidental, and we would like to see whether this could be done systematically. So what we have done is put together, in Spain, we are starting in Spain, 40 companies. Uh, we have a process where they can meet every three months, and we are developing methods, systems, tools, to make them realize their invisible assets that could be combined with other companies. Well, we started in Spain, but nowadays we are, we are in other countries. We are starting in Denmark, Finland, and Sweden in this year, and we have been talking with people in Canada, uh, in Italy, and the Netherlands. And the idea is to develop a, a global network of companies that are willing to collaborate. Well, uh, I don't have time here to go uh, to detail, but let me show the, the sort of results that you could get when you put companies together in a systematic process. If I take one furniture maker or one sneakers maker, which are companies in very different sectors, so that typically there will be no combination in is like uh, crazy I mean, how you can combine these two things. Very different products, very different philosophies, very different manufacturing processes. But if you put together, you are uh, people from design, it's no difficult, it's, it's, there's no difficulty at all to see the result of the addition of these two things. So if you morph these two things, you will have one of these wonderful softwares here for morphing. I haven't tried this, if you can, uh, will be a nice project. If you morph these two things, I bet that the result is this. So the result is one product, the one product with the other's design. This is the addition. It's very simple, right? But if you think in terms of multiplication, it's more complex. And it's where it makes sense to have this systematic intersection. When you think in terms of multiplication, you don't think about the products. So you don't think about what they do. You think about what they could do with their invisible assets. For instance, in this, uh, in this specific company that you know, based in Barcelona, they have 200,000 teams in Facebook. That's not easy. 200,000 people in Facebook. If you have 200,000 teams in Facebook, you could start a project like, which room would you love to have? Which is not. Okay, will you buy this sofa? They, they will not. So the idea is, which room would you like to have if you had the possibility to tell us what you love? So imagine that you put together in this network a bunch of teams developing the new concept of a room. I bet that a different thing will happen. And these guys will actually build it. So the idea, we haven't done this project yet, is something that we would like to do in the future. But the idea is, if you put together the invisible assets of two companies, you can generate something which is very, very different. Another interesting example to tell you what's going on around us that we are not noticing, uh, this is one a typical, uh, it's a medical condition of uh, a lot of people in the world, it's called Vectus excavatum, it's hollow chest. 
So this, uh, this uh, medical problem uh, had a very typical solution. The, the normal solution was like a palanca. How do you translate palanca? Liver? You know, uh, the, the idea was that you had to, uh, uh, you had a liver here, put it in, in your chest, so the sternum, which is uh, hollowed, you will look at something like this, so you put the sternum out. So this medical doctor invented a new way to do it, which is uh, just the contrary, which is a sort of screw that is taking the sternum out from outside of the body. Anyway, the idea is that this doctor developed a new method but they didn't, he, they, he didn't have the, the, the technical solution. The company manufacturing this metal plate that could be used for this process. So this doctor went to a company that was manufacturing uh, stuff for cars. So he was a, a, co a car component manufacturer. And uh, they started talking. And the result is this, which is, which is a new medical component that is presented as a kit, as you see, as a surgery kit with all the different tools that is being presented around the world and is transforming the way you solve this medical problem. So the future is that a medical doctor is seducing a mechanical components company in order to do something absolutely new that will change the way you do so the future is this sort of collaboration. Companies in different sectors doing things together. And design will be very important in this edition. So you will have a very important role in this combination of capabilities, in this combination of knowledge. So going to the end, uh, what we learned? Well, what we learned is that this is difficult because people are selfish. We are selfish. And the system is based on competition. So pushing the idea of collaboration between companies is very difficult. I mean, uh, believe me, I mean, trust me. Uh, it's difficult. Companies know how to compete. They want to collaborate, but they don't have a clue. It's very difficult because the system is based on competition. But the idea is that there is no possibility to stop this process because this world is, the world is becoming so complex that you cannot solve it without collaboration. That is a perfect example. You can be a doctor and invent a new thing, but within, without this other company, you cannot solve the problem. So the world is becoming too complex to be solved alone. So it requires collaboration. So we have to learn a lot about collaboration. And collaboration is built up of trust. So establishing the conditions for companies, people, uh, teams, to develop trust will be uh, a clear need in the, near, in the next years and uh, an opportunity for a lot of companies um, bringing trust systems. And trust stems from generosity. So what we have learned is that there are four different words that will be very relevant in the next years in this economic system. Complexity, how we solve complexity through collaboration by establishing trust that is the result of generosity. So these four words will be very critical in learning, in business, in social terms, and uh, it will be, a, I bet, a real revolution as compared to the previous 100 years of management that were based on competition. So it is not that I think that the future is based on collaboration, is that the, the present is based on collaboration according to all the examples that we have seen around the world. So it's something that is around us that we don't care, that in re reality we don't see, but it's around you. So I, I invite you to be uh, very, uh, I would say, uh, open to the idea of collaboration, to start uh, doing it, uh, and, uh, because there is uh, no other way. Thank you very much.